Hello everyone, I'm Sylvia from Fellai Tarot. Welcome to my channel. I wanted to give you a huge thank you to all of you who wish me well. Um, it worked. <laughs> I feel so much better now. And uh, as you can tell, my voice is on demand as well, so I can finally talk. So here I am doing a super fun VR. It's called Only 10 Indie Decks. Now, you probably remember some time ago there was a VR going around and it was so much fun. It was called Only 10 Mass Market Decks. Now, it's the same team, Rose Honey Ritual and Garden Goddess Tarot. And, and this time they've decided to focus only on Indie Decks. And uh, if you watch my channel, you know that I love Indie Decks. Um, I have a few. <laughs> And so um, it was so difficult for me to choose only 10. I think I chose only 10, but I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Let's have a look. So there's only one rule to this tag. Well, apart from the fact that I have to be indie decks. Um, and it's that uh, they have to be independent, but uh, they have to be still in print. So, because otherwise it will be, you know, it's heartbreaking when you see a tarot deck you've never seen before, you really fall in love with it, and then you find out that it's out of print, it's very hard to find, or super expensive. Um, I get it. I completely get it. So, the rule is they have to be uh, still in print. And of course, the first one I'm showing you is out of print. So, what I've decided since... I've been debating whether to show this tarot or not, but if I had to save out of my entire collection, and it's really painful to say only 10 decks, I, this one would be probably the first one that I pick. Um, I am so attached to this deck that honestly, I could not leave it out of this tag. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to show you this one, but because it is out of print, I'm actually gonna show you a deck that is still in print. It's also indie. And it's a deck that I feel has, let's say they share a same vibe. But let's focus on this one. So the Ember Nora Tarot, the Awakening Edition. Um, so Jamie Richardson, she's a wonderful illustrator and deck creator. Um, she's not, unfortunately, going to reprint the reason more the um, awakening edition and the original edition um she is uh, let's say she's changed her view on tarot and uh, i wish her luck but it was a bit heartbreaking for me when i received the email because i was really hoping for her to go ahead and create an oracle deck that i would have loved to purchase and pair up with the tarot but that's okay because that's the beauty of it that we can whenever we feel that we have to move away from something then i, I, I really think that we need to follow what our heart what our intuition is telling us to do um so obviously if you have this deck you'll understand what i mean it's such a beautiful deck this is the awakening edition and it's got a slightly different color palette or not even color palette, but I would say something like a different hue um, to the colors. Um, the colors seem to be more pastel to me and less earthy than the original edition. As a matter of fact, they don't even share the same elemental energy. I would say that uh, the um, um, original edition, because of the earthy colors, has an earthy kind of energy, whereas this one is more of an airy and also watery kind of a deck for me. It's the right combination between airy and watery because it's it, it rather appeals to the mind but also to the feelings, to the heart. And this is the deck, it is my go-to deck whenever I feel down, whenever I feel like I, I need a pick-me-up. It is a very positive deck, it's a deck that is very kind I really do appreciate the fact that um, um, even, you know, difficult cards like the Five of Swords, because of the rather peepish, um, you know, layout of the miners, or at least time of the miners, um, you can apply kindness even to a really, really tough or confrontational card. I love this devil card. I love the fact that the devil is wearing a pink robe. By the way, again, apologies for noises coming from outside. 
uh, there's a lot of renovation works going on in my area there is not much i can do about it everything is closed all the windows are the doors are closed um but they are really close by and sometimes you may hear some banging <laughs> I also love the three ones. I love the fact that the sun is so big in on the horizon and she's already standing on what to me looks like a raft in the ocean. So she's not anymore on ground, on safe ground. She's already taken that step forward, which is the way I see the three ones. I cannot stand the traditional depiction of the three ones. There's a people looking, there's a person looking out and seeing the, the, the vessels whether they're leaving or they're coming back i want to be on that vessel so this is the ember nora tarot and the reason why it's in this deck is because i owe so much uh, to this deck especially during the pandemic it has been my faithful companion it is a kind deck and if i really have to choose only 10 in the deck out of my entire collection this one would definitely be the first one that i salvage so this is the Ember Nora Tarot. However, as I said, because one of the rules of this tag has to be that the decks um, need to be still in print or, you know, it, it needs to be possible for people uh, to actually purchase them. What I'm going to show you is the Mara Loon Tarot, which is still in print. It's an indie deck. I think you can find it in a couple of um, um, websites. One of them is probably Make Playing Cards or Game Crafter, I don't remember. But in any case, I've got the this edition, which is not the linen. So it, it's probably MPC, it's the classic uh, MPC card stock, which I actually like because it's very easy to shuffle. It's a perfect size for me. And it does share the kind of similar um, color palette that we've seen in the Ember and Aura. What it definitely shares with the Emperor Nora is also the kindness. It is a very kind deck. And as I said before, I mean, if you need, when you decide which decks to save, let's say there's a fire, obviously knocking on wood, uh, there isn't. But if there were a fire and you have to save only 10 decks because that's all you have room for, which ones do you reach out for? Well, in my case, uh, the Embernor for sure, and this one as well. And they would probably cover exactly the same type of need. Um, I do read both of them in the same way, in the same kind of structure, in the same kind of um, the part of my practice that um, needs um, some kindness, that needs some gentle kind of message. Not to talk about the fact that I really, really love this chariot card. It's one of my favorite ones. To me, the fact that, um, you know, it's literally um, that feeling of spreading your wings and just flying away, which is very comforting. And this deck is more or less like this. As the Emperor it also shares the fact that some of the pips, um, so some of the miners are pipish, um, which is odd because not all of them. And I really love the Ouroboros used in the uh, death card. The second deck that I would definitely make sure to salvage, whether I only had to choose 10 out of my indie decks, is the Service Old Tarot by Julie Whitelish. If you watch my channel, you've seen this deck so many times, you're probably tired of seeing it. This deck is me. This deck is my life. It's literally every single card, as I've said many, many times. And mind you, I haven't started uh, my love affair with this deck that way. I mean, to me, uh, when I saw it on Kickstarter, I really loved, I saw a couple of uh, cards and I really loved them. And um, and I thought, okay, well, um, you know, I, I do um, back up a lot of decks on Kickstarter, so basically, um, I don't ask myself a lot of questions whenever I choose whether to back a deck up or not. But I saw this card, it's the Three of Wands. And the, the, the sentence, so this, this deck has, for each and every card, there's obviously the number, there's the title, there's the image, but also a um, sentence at the bottom of the card. I don't know if you can see, but in this case it says, what you seek is seeking you, which is kind of my mantra. Um, you know, the fact that uh, we have to be aware and responsible of what we desire, what we're looking for. 
um, because desired outcomes most of the time are the way in which we focus, the way in which we channel our energy into our practice, into our lives, into our achievements and career and endeavors. And therefore, if we seek a positive outcome, we channel our energy in a positive way. And most of the time, it will be the result. We might not always be aware that it is that way, but it actually is. And when I saw the sentence, I knew that this deck was going to be important in my collection. When I received it, I just had this kind of a character arc or, you know, evolution of um, reading up a fear with this deck because I started um, playing with it. I started looking at it. I started studying it. And um, I realized more or less after probably a couple of weeks that I was using it, I realized that um, this deck and I bond so intensely together because for each and every card there is a memory in my past, in my core self that speaks to me about myself. And I just really love this in a deck. I need... So I remember being in a writer's workshop a couple of years ago, a few years ago, and they were asking the really smart questions about, oh, what do people want to read about? And everyone was like, oh, they want to read about love. They want to read about... And everyone was coming up with, um, you know, human emotions or feelings. But personally, I think that people want to read about themselves. So what we seek in a movie or, or a book, for example, or any other form of entertainment is recognition. It's a meaningful connection between what we look at or read or enjoy and ourselves. And this deck is exactly that for me. It's really reminding me of myself. Parts of myself that I have forgotten, parts of myself that are still with me and are still present, but still need to be nourished. And that's the main reason why I will never part with this deck because it's like having a photo book. Um, I might not look like these people, obviously not, um, but whatever they go through, I have been through um, their joys, their indecision, their uncertainty, their self-doubt, um, their happiness, their discomfort, their loss, their grief is what I have been through. And it's all of this is part of myself. So this is the Savvy Soul Tarot by Judy Wildlash. And by the way, uh, Julie still have a few copies in stock, so if you follow her on Instagram, you can interact with her and she'll definitely let you know um, how many she has left. So I'll make sure to put the um, her Instagram handle in the description box below. So the Salana Oculto Tarot, it's not a cheating because this deck is going to be reprinted. Um, it, I think it's an actually a very advanced uh, stage of uh, the reprinting. I think the um, creator is not only reprinting the entirety of the tarot, but she's also, and they're, by the way, they're borderless. So if you remember the original version of this deck, it came with huge borders that uh, made it impossible for me to shuffle. When I got this deck, I had no idea I was going to go out of print and so hard to find. And um, I really love it. I love all everything about it. The color palette, the artwork, the contrast in the cards, uh, the symbology. But I couldn't use it. And so I had to trim it down, not knowing, as I said, that it was going to become so coveted, so sought after. But yeah, so it's going to be reprinted and um, the creator is going to include the Mercury, Salt and Sulfur. Uh, or at least not, may, perhaps not all of the cards of the Oracle, but many of the cards of the Oracle in the reprint. So you're going to have, again, I know that Instagram is becoming terrible as a platform for any kind of content creator. And I had a lot of problems with Instagram lately. But um, it is still really good um, to follow artists because they do post a lot of photos of uh, their creative process. It's very easy, let's say, to interact with them. And uh, you can actually get to know what's happening in their creative space. And so I, I'm still on Instagram, uh, not because I actually believe in my 
um, account anymore because I've been hacked so many times. My content has been stolen so many times that it's actually disheartening. And every time that I report it, um, the standard answer now is to say that uh, there were too many reports and so they couldn't um, actually verify that what I reported was um, actually stolen, which is ridiculous. And, um, and what they say now is, but we do recommend that you pay the monthly fee for uh, the blue tick, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> because why should I pay for uh, people not to steal my content? Anyway, so um, as I said, this deck is going to be reprinted. It is absolutely adorable. I love all about it. Um, the figures, the characters are just um, so powerful to me. But it's also, in a way, it's also a kind deck. But I think the, the thing that I like the most about this deck is definitely the color palette. It is muted, but it's beautiful. It creates contrast. It's gorgeous. So this is the Solara Occulto Tarot. And uh, as I said, it's going to be reprinted. And the next deck is also for now out of print, but and I was contemplating not including it in this deck. However, I also subscribed to Sam's uh, newsletter, Sam Rice, the uh, creator. Also sent an email a couple of days, I believe, saying that she's also going to reprint the Blood Moon Tarot. So that made me really, really happy. I don't know what the changes are going to be. A lot of people are asking for it to be borderless. Um, or, you know, have perhaps tweak a little bit on the uh, exposure on the images because some of the images are a bit dark and you can't really tell what's going on in the background, which is such a pity because when you do, I have the book as well and in the book the images are actually much brighter so you can actually see and you see that this is a person here. So this is a person with hands here, hands here. It's just such beautiful deck. Everything about this deck is absolutely glorious. I love the color palette. I love the artwork. I love the fact that it's oneric, so it's it's dream-like. I absolutely love the fact that every time I use this deck, I think about the Pan's Labyrinth, the movie by Guillermo del Toro because it's it's that kind of feeling um, you know about something that is um, excessive perhaps but still related to fairy tale and beautiful um, and what I mean excessive I mean in the nature kind of excessive so that stage of nature in which you almost go towards decay there is so much ripeness that it's just one step away from decay but it's the way in which this tarot works and it's absolutely fantastic. And I love the fact that the, uh, all the suits have consistent color palettes. So the songs, for example, have this really beautiful color palette and other suits as well. It's just beautiful. It's very interesting the way it works, the way it reads. This is to me, this is a card that really reminds me of the Pan's Labyrinth because I don't know if you, um, if you know, if you know the, which movie I'm referring to. There is a character that has eyes on their hands, and it's got a suit of dreams, which is referred to the suit of air, which is perfect for me because the, the suit of air refers to the suit of the mind. It's. And when I talk about, you know, being ripe, I really love this card. It's the Haze of Honey. And, uh, you know, the honey is actually um, just slowly uh, draining out of this pomegranate. It's just gorgeous. I'm so happy that she's going to reprint it. And even if it's exactly the same, I'll definitely get another copy because it's, this is the only copy that I have. It's the Deluxe edition but it's really really superb so this is the blood montero and it's one of my 10 decks that i would definitely salvage out of my entire collection if i had to choose only 10. so the millennial tarot it's actually a recent acquisition in my collection and i've been talking about this deck i've actually done a deep dive and a walkthrough i will link it here if i remember i hope i will this deck is 
really important in my collection and it's one of the 10 that I really, really don't want to leave behind. And the reason is that this deck is superb. Um, the way in which I bond with this deck reminds me a bit of the way in which I bond with the Savvy Soul Tarot. Even though I don't have the same kind of resonances that I can find in a Savvy Soul Tarot, so I don't um, necessarily resonate with all of these cards but i do feel that the majority of these cards for example this is the nine of thoughts and thoughts is a suit of swords so the suit of air which is perfect because it's related to the mind and in my case the sun base carries is perfect it's perfect because um, I don't work in an office anymore, but when I used to, Sunday afternoons were just the worst time of the week for me, knowing that the weekend was over and that, you know, I had only a few hours of freedom left <laughs> and then I had to go to bed and, uh, and try and sleep instead of, you know, laying out awake and thinking of all the bad stuff that was going to happen in the office in the week to come. And, and so it goes for many other cards. I really do connect with this deck. I understand every single card. I have, it, to me, the cards have been renamed in such a perfect way that it's difficult not to um, immediately understand them. It's a kind of deck that I, I wish all of the decks were like that, but then again, I also know that um, it's not necessary. Like in my case, I think that if there were another deck like this, so with this kind of renaming of the cards, I would probably not buy because this is so perfect that I don't feel like I need another one. But I also wish that all of the decks had that kind of keywords, um, if not necessarily the same keywords, but the kind of keywords that make you go, ah, oh, yeah, of course, of course it is like that. Um, the Wheel of Fortune is a Bitcoin investment. Whatever happens to Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, I think that the fact that it's associated with the ups and downs of the Wheel of Fortune is really genius. It's absolutely brilliant. I really do believe that every single one of them... And then, of course, I get to the Six of Thoughts, which is the Six of Swords. And that is actually one of the few, very few cards that I actually disagree with. So Girl Strip for me is not relatable to the Six of Swords. The Six of Swords is a trip for sure. Um, or rather, it's a transformation that you have to go through. It is not something that in my mind um, evokes a Girl Strip. A Girl Strip for me, I don't know if it's just me that I have wonderful memories of any ghost trip I ever have, um, whereas I don't necessarily relate to wonderful memories whenever it comes to the Six of Swords. As a matter of fact, it's the kind of journey you have to embark upon because you have to go to a better place, but you're really not happy about having to. But all of the other cards are just fantastic. I really, really um, love it, and I think that it makes for a great um, a starter, let's say, or a beginner star deck because of these uh, keywords. So this is the Millennial Tarot. The next deck is super duper cool. Um, it is the Badass Tarot. It's actually a combination of the Badass Tarot 1 and the Badass Tarot 2 by Halle Spencer. I have both the decks. And um, what I've done, I went through both the decks and I chose for each and every card, I chose one from either one or the other edition. And I'm really happy about the result because as you can see, the backs are all the same. And um, it's even the cards have the same um, layout, they have the same font. So it's not difficult, let's say, to, um, to pair up these two decks together. And I am so happy because this way this deck speaks to me. And, um, you know, there were a few cards from the Badass, Badass Tarot 1 that I really liked and a few from the Badass Tarot 2 that I really like and I put them together and it's perfect. This deck is absolutely, like the name says, Badass. It's the kind of deck that really doesn't pull any punches and it shows you exactly things the way they are. 
um, it's irreverent, it's funny, it's whimsical, it's powerful um, and you can giggle, you can cry, you can, you can literally say yeah absolutely, <laughs> that's exactly like that but on the other hand it also um, brings up a lot of the social anxiety that we've had um, you know that we had to deal with in the past few years um, but it also asks you not to take it so seriously and and it does that and it does that in such a way that I really really connect with this deck I really really like it uh, by the way, coincidentally, I also follow Harley's page in on Instagram. She is so much fun. Um, she's not just a really, really cool person. Um, she's also the kind of person that you you feel like you can be friends with. She, she's really lovely. I remember just this thing that I wanted to mention. Um, so there's um, she she posted a story in which she was saying three years ago I only had seventy five dollars in my purse. Now it's three years later, I have published a couple of tarot decks and I have only $50 in my purse. <laughs> and I thought that was super fun because I am so tired. I know about you, but I am so tired about all of these stories of success, about people saying, I was almost bankrupt. I only had $50 in my bank account. Now I'm a billionaire. Well, guess what? The majority of us don't. So I'm sorry, but I want to hear stories of people who actually are still doing it tough because personally, I connect a lot more with these people and, uh, you know, kudos on you that you have billions of dollars in your bank account and you only sat with 50, but uh, it's not the majority of us. So I really, really like Harley's humor because she is really, really cool. And so this is the badass, a combination between the cards of the badass tower one and the best tower two. And this sack is one that I've shown many, many times in my channel because it's a Venetian tarot and I'm from Venice. Um, this deck is still, um, so it has been out of print for a while, but now it's been reprinted and there's still a few copies available on uh, Eugene Vinitsky's uh, website. I think you may also be able to find it on Etsy. Um, so I'll make sure to put the description, I'll make sure to put the link in the description box below. Um, as you can see, this deck is still in order and the reason is that I don't actually use it for readings anymore. I tried a few times. Um, it's not that it doesn't read well, it actually reads really, really well. But to me, um, this deck is absolutely it's so powerful and so very touching because I love Venice. I feel down to my core Venetian. I recognize so much of my spirit, of my family's legacy in the history of Venice. Um, Venice, if you don't know, Venice has been a republic for um, a thousand years. They were not engaging in any kind of war. So that's why they call it the Serenissima. Serenissima means the most serene because it was a peaceful um, republic for over a thousand years, which is to this day I'm defeated. Now, obviously, there were a lot of things going on. If you study history, you will know that because it was based on commerce with, for example, with the eastern countries, uh, Venice was um, a, I think it was a modern example of uh, this melting pot that we have nowadays, integration between any kind of different ethnicities. Um, and it's also because it was a CC that was based on merit. So if you had, um, you know, your own business and if you really worked hard, you can actually make it in Venice. And it's the one thing that I really love about this deck. It's just that uh, there's so much respect by the creator about the Venetian culture. Um, everything that has been chosen uh, down to the colors of the clothes and, you know, the fact that there's fog here. Venice, if you've been there, you will know Venice is covered in fog, especially during the colder months. Um, the fact that the, the masks look exactly like we've seen them depicted in many history books and many frescoes. 
Um, I've talked about the meaning about this bridge, the bridge of size on the justice card because prisoners went from this building into this building, which is actually a prison. And it was a prison that was for lifers, so for people who had to stay in prison their whole life. And these two windows used to be open, so the, these, um, when these two windows overlook the sea. So whenever a prisoner had to cross this bridge in order to go to jail, they would have the last possibility to have the last look at the sea. And this is called the Bridge of Sides because, of, of course, they were just exhaling um, the sadness of this moment by looking out of these windows for the last time. And the fact that there is so much attention to details about this is it's very important to me because I really appreciate the research that has been done and the, the way in which it has been reproduced. So this is definitely in one of my 10 indie decks that I will salvage because it is really, um, you know, the, the essence of Venice, the way that I feel uh, Venice is as a city. So this is the Venetian Tower. And the Inkwitch Tarot deck is, of course, one of the 10 that I will salvage out of my entire collection. And I'm happy to say that I also follow Eric's page and he's actually in the process of printing a second version of this deck. I uh, don't know yet, um, you know, if there will be changes. I think there probably will be. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm so happy to uh, say that this is one of my favorite decks. It's one of the decks that I always take with me whenever I travel. So it's a bit <laughs> bruised and battered because it's been everywhere, especially the, the tap box, um, you know, it's starting to come apart. Not to say that it's not sturdy. It's just that I'm that type of traveler. I really treat everything in a very rough way whenever I travel, but I take it with me because whenever I read tarot for, uh, friends that I'm going to catch up with overseas or friends that I'm traveling with they seem to love it it's um it's always very much appreciated um I do my all my kind of normal readings not necessarily the ones related to very specific practices in my um in my tarot I like it because it's got see that kind of traditional feel combined with the modern feel and uh, i really really appreciate it some cards as you can see uh they're uh, a bit pippish but not all of them and i really like the combination of that so the ten of pentacles for example um this card is absolutely beautiful it's the eight of wands and i really love the fact that it does suggest that kind of movement that kind of um exaltation together with the element of fire, which is the fire is the, obviously the element of the suit of wands. And I really love this eight of cups as well, because um, it, to me, the eight of cups is leaving something broken behind. And I really love the fact that the cups are broken here and the figure is just going away. And it reminds me to me, it also the eight of cups is always have a bit of a parallel in the six of swords. And I love the fact that this could be a six of swords as well, because it's got that kind of um, refuration as well. I love everything about it. I love the muted color palette. I love the art style. It's really, really cool. So as I said, um, Eric is preparing a second version. I am so excited. I really hope that um, yeah, there are some cards in this deck that are my favorite cards. So on the one hand, I'm like, I'm super happy that it's going to be a second version because I'm going to buy it, so I'm going to have two decks. <laughs> but it's um, on the other hand, I'm also like, oh, I really hope that, you know, my favorite cards are still going to be there. But I'm also curious to see what his interpretation of some of these cards are. So it's going to be really exciting. So this is the Inkwitch Tarot. Okay, you're probably going to wonder what is this deck doing here if it's supposed to be an indie deck that it's not out of print. And I've got news for you. So the Burnstone and Earthflash Star by Avalon Camera, illustrated by my favorite Anna Turian, is also going to be reprinted. Um, again, if you follow Anna's page or Avalon's page on Instagram, you will see what I mean. 
um, it's there it's in the works already I don't necessarily know they haven't necessarily shared too much about what is going to happen if it's going to change what's going to change what one thing that I keep on saying though is that the uh, guidebook is not going to be as chunky as this one um, so I'm I'm really happy that I have this version because you know um, because I really like actually the um, the guidebook and this deck is definitely one of my favorites um, in my collection it is one of the decks that um, I don't know it's I would burn my hands before I leave this deck behind the colors the artwork I love the interpretation of the cards I love the choices uh, that have been made behind um, the characters in the cards um, everything about it is um, so deeply touching for me but it's also interesting it's a love affair but it's also um, I love studying the, the guidebook I love understanding um, what the meanings are and why um, well in this case the ace of swords is a quill which is fantastic I absolutely get it and it's something that um, it has been done in other decks for example uh, but there's other cards that um, you know there's a really deep meaning to them and it's really beautiful to get to know why these characters and these particular scenes have been chosen to represent these cards. I love the association of colors. I love this seven of cups because it's the way in which a merchant is inviting you to pick one of these things. And obviously there is this kind of a smirk on his face because you know that there is deceit there, but you also love what he's selling. And so you're kind of willing to be deceived, uh, which is the essence of the seven of cups. You just have to be really careful. I love the Eight of Wands. I've, um, I've talked about this card before because I really love um, wild horses. So we call them Brumbies in Australia. I know that they're called Mustangs in the US. And uh, it's just each and every card um, really gives me a sense of beauty. Um, the world with Yggdrasil and the rainbow colors is just absolutely wonderful. I even like this spider and if you know me you know that I'm not really a fan <laughs> of spiders I love this star card I even love the tower although it makes me really really sad the lovers is amazing so as I said um, and if look at this devil if it's not absolutely gorgeous I don't know what it is I think it's my favorite devil card and I'm not a fan generally of the devil card because of its meaning but the fact that, you know, the devil is standing on this mountain of skulls, it's just superb. And this death card is really, really touching. And I could go on for each and every card, so I really have to <laughs> just go on, move on. Because it's just the kind of deck that I could really gush over each and every card. I mean, look at this Ace, Ace of Wands, it's just perfect. So I'm so happy that they decided to print another version or and you know have another print. I am definitely going to get it and I can't wait for it to be available. So this is the Bonstone and a Flesh Tarot. And last but not least, this is a bit of a cheat because this is the Yokai Yochi Tarot and it is out of print and it's also very hard to find. However, <laughs> And this is the reason why I did, after much debating, decided to include this um, tarot deck in this tag. I know that Booba Blake has opened a shop in which she's, um, well, she's selling a lot of prints, for example. She's also selling enamel uh, pins and um, um, mostly art prints. But I also know that um, there's a lot of requests, there's a lot of pressure for her to reprint this deck. And I absolutely don't know anything, so I don't want you to get excited because I really do not know anything. It's just my intuition. It's and probably not just intuition, but hope mostly. I really hope that um, she will print this deck again. She did reprint it last year. So after she had actually said that she wouldn't have printed it again. So there is hope. 
um, and I know that right now it's out of print and maybe will always be out of print. Maybe she will never reprint it. But this deck is absolutely superb. And who am I kidding? Of course, if I had to save only 10 decks, this will be part of those 10. Because it's just, um, first of all, I'm in love with Japan, everything about it. I love the culture, I love the language, I love the food, I love the people. Um, and I love, you know, the artistic representation of everything that is related to Japan. And this tarot deck is something that combines my love for Japan with culture and in specific with supernatural culture because yokai are spirits. So this is the deck of the Japanese spirits. And it's something that I absolutely adore. As a matter of fact, I actually did a video in which I go through all of the cards of the Major Arcana and I explain the spirits um, of these cards. If I remember, I will link it here. And uh, I just really adore this deck. I actually use it for readings, even though now I try not to because I'm terrified of ruining it, even though it's a fantastic um, uh, soft linen finish and really really high quality so I'm not necessarily worried about uh, the deck wearing out but you know because it's my last copy I really don't want to I, I don't want anything to happen to this deck because it will literally break my heart so this is the Yokai Yochi Tarot and it's the last deck of my only 10 indie decks which is AVR to Rose Honey Ritual and the Garden Goddess Tarot. It was so much fun to show you these decks. What I'm thinking is that I might actually do the same, only 10 indie decks for Oracle decks. I don't know, but I feel like there's a lot of the indie Oracle decks that I would definitely have to save uh, if the ever for a file. So thank you so much for staying with me until the end of this video. Thank you for liking and subscribing. It really, really helps a lot. More to come. Have a great day.